hello and welcome to the show. I am here on Forza 6 with a new series. Now, while the silly car builds are all very well and fun, I wanted something that was a little bit a little bit more competitive. I didn't just simply want to do, you know, timed laps around a track. It's a little bit boring, a little bit uncreative. Uh, but I saw uh, recently in the comment section of the video, someone suggested I should try autocross car builds. And that to me sounds like a lot of fun. I love autocross. It is a fantastic, fantastic event. And building cars for that uh, could be quite interesting, seeing how they react to the the very specific demands of the autocross circuit. Now, the first thing, though, that we must do is give them a target time to try and beat. And, well, this seems like the perfect vehicle. It is the BAC Mono, which, let's face it, is a damn good choice of vehicle for autocross. It is small, it is light, it is agile, plenty of acceleration, lots of grip, and very, very good brakes. All things that you want for a car when you go to the autocross event. Now, to compete in autocross, to do these uh, these things, we're having to do it in rivals mode. Now, there is only one event that will allow me to pick kind of any car, so we're having to use A-class vehicles. A-class is the class for uh, our car build. Works out quite nicely with the mono being the very, very top of, of A-class. The rest of the things, you know, there's one for track toys, one for V8 supercars, one for touring cars, I think the other ones, yeah, American muscle cars. So they're all very, very restrictive. This is the only one that uh, allows you to use any vehicle, so that's why it's uh, A-class. And again, it's it, Hockenheim. That's the circuit that we have been given to uh, to use for for this. So we're going to uh, give the uh, give the mono its shot. I have been around this track a fair few times. One of the big kind of almost concerns I had with uh, with doing this as a series is you got to try and be consistent. And autocross is a little bit more difficult to be consistent around here. Say you're you're hot lapping around a track. If you're uh, a few millimeters wide of a corner, even it's not going to affect your lap time very much at all. Whereas a few millimeters in autocross means you can hit a barrel, ruin your run. So consistency is very, very, very important on here. So I have been around and practiced this track with uh, plenty of my A-class race cars. So fingers crossed I should know <laughs> what I'm doing when I'm coming to, uh, to drive this, uh, this BAC. And I'm expecting this to be a pretty damn decent car for, <laughs> for this thing. As I said, should be really quite good for uh, autocross. So let's see how we do with the mono. Now, there are some... Uh, is the Hockenheim circuit, an interesting uh, an interesting autocross track. There are some some interesting demands on the uh, the vehicles. Circuit of the Americas track, where I did the Corvette showcase event, was all very, very tight and technical. Whereas here, there are some sections like this bit here. Wow, you can carry a lot of speed in the mono. Uh, <laughs> where you can really get away with taking a lot of speed through the turns. That, <laughs> I like this car already. That was really nice through uh, through there. Yeah, you can take a lot of speed through some of the sections. And then almost immediately afterwards, you've got these tight twisty sections again. This gate here looks very deceptive on the way in. Oh, no, don't slide. Uh, but that's actually quite a slow gate. And then it's followed by this really fast section. Can we beat? I'm not, I'm not going to try that flat out. It might do it, though. That does look like it could potentially do that flat out through there. Uh, and it's this change from suddenly going through really quick sections to, or relatively speaking, really quick sections to these then really narrow, tight, twisty ones where you don't get much above 60 miles an hour. That's where the challenge in this circuit uh, comes in. I like it. It's... Um, it's certainly an interesting one. It does put a lot of demands on the uh, on the vehicles. This bit here is a real bugger. So narrow through there. One of the few places where you probably well where I will probably be using uh, first gear on uh, on the cars, and then it speeds up again. This next bit is very deceptive. Uh, we can probably break a little bit later than that, maybe. As uh, it looked very quick on the way in, but there's a really awkwardly placed gate, so it's actually quite a slow section. That's a weird bit as well. You uh, really got to get the car straightened up to get through there. It can be flat out and straight lined, basically, but you cannot afford to have uh, any problems. You can't have an oversteery car. Oversteer is the, probably your worst enemy for, for autocross, especially that bit there. If you get the car sideways and out of control, you are uh, in trouble trying to fit through that very narrow section. And then we finish off the run with these uh, tight twiddly bits towards the end. Do we want first gear? Probably not. Don't jump on the power too soon. Wait, let the car settle. And now we run for the line. How are we going to do time-wise? 210.9. That's not bad. That's not bad for a first first run with the mono, not bad at all. That's only 
Uh, but that's less than a second off the time set by my race alpha, so <laughs> that's pretty good going. Pretty good going from this car. Hey, I've got affinity leveled up. Right, uh, we're going to do three runs for each of the vehicles, of course, taking the, the fastest run. This should give me a decent opportunity to set a, a clean and set a quick time for the cars. Now I've got a nice time in the bank, I can go a little bit braver perhaps with the uh, with the mono. There's a couple of places I think I can perhaps get a little bit more speed out of out of the car. Um, maybe get it under the under the under the two tens if uh, if it all goes well. Potentially, it's going to be tough though. <laughs> As that would be a very very quick time. Now remember that the first gate here is slow. It's really easy to get carried away. You know, you want to get into the run, so you try and take it far too quickly because it is a very low speed gate through that uh, that first bit. And now we can open the taps up on the mono, try and carry the uh, carry the speed through here. Oh, careful! Does it? That was a <laughs> that was close. It is a little bit mean on that section. If you stray a little bit too wide, despite the fact that the gates are taking you out that way, if you stray a bit too wide, it'll give you a dirty lap, which is uh, yeah, a little bit arsy. So for for the sake of this series, if it's a dirty lap from going out there, I'm not counting. It, 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 it doesn't matter if it's clean or dirty dirty lap. Uh, let's face it, if you're off on the grass, the chances are you've ruined the run anyway. So, yeah, it's not really going to be an important thing. That is so much speed through there. I love it. Uh, this mono is a really, really good car for uh, for autocross. Now, one of the things that uh, you often see with the track cars, on Forza 5 it was terrible for having the track cars have a lot of front-end grip, absolutely no rear-end grip, made them very, very difficult to drive quickly. It's a much lesser extent here on uh, 6. It can still happen, though, with uh, with some of them, but the Mono is probably my favourite of the uh, the track cars. This one is so planted on the most part. Sure, you know, you're a moron with the throttle in a low gear, you'll get it sideways, but uh, on the most part, it is a really nice, sorted-out car. And uh, now we're coming up to this scary bit. I was just making sure we were all lined up. Pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with this run so far. This one here is going well for the mono. The hairpin is a nasty bugger because uh, the way that the uh, one, of, one of the gates there is slightly put out of place, so you end up kind of letting the understeer carry you a little bit wide, and then for the final gate, you've really got to cut it back. And uh, yeah, it's a really, really mean gate placement. I hope you understand. It's so hard to uh, to try and show you when I'm racing through these at speed. But uh, yeah, there's a really mean gate placement in uh, in that one just to try and catch you out. And then this bit here is quite mean because you really want to jump on the power, but you just can't until there. Now we run to the line. Oh, this is quick. <laughs> that is a monumentally fast time. <laughs> That is stupidly quick from the uh, from the mono. That's a 207. Ooh, I'm not sure I can go very much quicker than that. In fact, <laughs> that is sorry. I've got to go. I've got to go. That is ridiculous. An untuned mono 207.7. Holy crap! That is a lot faster than I went with the alpha. <laughs> <laughs> I may have just... Uh, I'm not sure this is, this is going to be a tough series for, well, anything to beat the mono. <laughs> that was fast. Um, let's try again. I mean, I've got one more attempt with this car, and I've got to try and beat that. Um, sure, okay, I'm going for it. Uh, <laughs> well, this has got a lot harder for, uh, <laughs> for any perspective cars. Right. Okay, Mono. Let's see what uh, what you have got. I can I can afford to take risks now. I mean, that is a really quick time in the bank for uh, for this car. Let's uh, let's see what we can uh, what we can do. But of course, I mean, I'm still wanting to uh, to to get it through the gates cleanly. Oh, that was quite pushing it. I'm not even sure I didn't have a wheel locked up ever so slightly. And got <laughs> I'm trying to get on the throttle really quickly now. It's just bursting into wheel spin a little bit. So we need a little lift through there. Ah, I clipped it. Oh, I was trying to take it a neater line through there, and I just clipped the code. Ah, oh, damn it. It was worth a try, though. It was worth a try. And that's what I'm saying about millimeters make a difference in autocross. You know, just, just trying to turn in that little bit sooner so I could get that neater line so I didn't have the oversteer on the way through the next part and so on. It all makes so much, so much difference. And uh, yeah, that one there, I overdid it ever so slightly on the uh, on the approach. Right, let's. Uh, I, I, I balls that one up completely. I slightly forgot where I was and had a little uh, had a little lift. Yeah, this this run is not going to be as as going to be as impressive. But uh, let's face it, not not much is going to be impressive as that last one. Um, yeah, I'm. 
I, I like this car. I really like this car. It's mighty, mighty impressive for uh, for this uh, this course, and I really like the way that it uh, it drives. Yeah, I can spin the wheels up, but on the most part, it's very, very manageable. Like there, this bit here is perhaps the only bit that the oversteer ever becomes an issue. Is because it's one of the slowest sections. You're coming from first gear, you're changing up into second all while trying to accelerate around a corner, and that's when the mono does perhaps ever so slightly want to get away from you. But uh, yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> It deals with it uh, remarkably well with straight line that there. Now, now I can actually show you why the gate here is so mean. So inside, inside, then it swings us outside and then back inside. That is why that is such a nasty section through there and why you may well see me with cars running a little wide uh, towards that final gate and panicking because it, it really tricks you where it wants you to go. Yeah, a nasty, nasty gate placement around the hairpin and then this final bit, it's just... You, you can see the time the time ticking, you want to go as quick as you can, but you've really got to slow and slow and wait and wait through here before you can get on the power for the, the run to the line. Yeah, <laughs> certainly wasn't going to beat that 207. Okay, we have a benchmark time and it is one hell of a fast time for the, uh, for the BAC Mono. Now we're going to have to see what uh, the cars that I build can do. Will they? be able to get anywhere near the mighty track car. And the first car to challenge the mono, well, fairly obvious choice for me. It is, of course, the Lotus Carlton. This is, I love this car, fantastically crazy vehicle. Admittedly, perhaps not the best suited car for autocross, but that's why, that's part of the reason the fun of doing this series. You know, see how some of these slightly less suitable vehicles do when challenged with a very nasty course. Now, the rules for the building of the cars, there are no mandatory parts for the vehicles. However, I am going to be building them pretty much for handling. Let's face it, autocross course, handling is fundamental. So most of the handling parts will be going on first. Uh, now, the the other things, I'm not changing the rims of the car. Yes, I know there are some that, uh, that can save a fair bit of weight. However, I am not going to change them. The reason behind this is that if I'm going to adjust them, of course, I'm going to stick on the lightest wheels. And the lightest wheels are likely to look absolutely awful on some of the classic cars and so on. And I don't want my classic cars to look awful ruined by some lightweight racing wheels so i'm simply not going to change them all of the vehicles are going to be run on their standard wheels since all of them are being run on it it is completely fair another rule is i am not tuning the cars whatsoever I, the mono is a completely standard one bought straight from the game uh, and everything else will be kept with its standard tuning setup the reason behind this being uh, that uh, First of all, keep everything fair uh, with between the cars, but uh, mainly, yes, I can adjust the handling characteristics of the car if I tune the suspension, the roll bars, and so on and so forth. But then I can adjust it to pretty much whatever I want, and then that kind of spoils the fun, really. If I tune a car to handle exactly how I want it to, it's more uh, me commentating on my tuning rather than what you know what the car does naturally. So I'm not going to tune them. They're going to they're going to drive however it is that they drive from uh, <laughs> from the combination of parts that I put on them. That is why I'm, I'm not going to be tuning the vehicles. Yeah, I'm sure if I fiddled about with the, the setup, I could get them to go quicker. But again, as everything is being run exactly the same, it doesn't matter. It's a fair test, regardless. Um, so, on to the building of my my Lotus. Uh, I'm kind of curious to see how this one uh, is going to uh, to turn out. Much larger car than the uh, the Mono, certainly. This one, race tires, going to jump us up almost into A class straight away. Uh, we're not going to have a huge amount of PI. God, that is a lot of 80 PI. Uh, not going to have a huge amount to play with by the time we're finished with the tyres alone. These are going to be very, very important. 285 tyres. I'm actually not sure. Tyre widths may not be as important uh, with uh, with this series as we saw with the rally car builds um, because we're not going to be dealing with fast, high-speed sections. We're going to be dealing with uh, a lot of wiggling in and out of gates. I think kind of lightness is perhaps going to be... Lightness and almost turning circle are going to be some of the most important things. Sure, you know, you want your tyres to have decent traction so I can use what power the car has. I think it's going to be less significant, though, on these vehicles. One thing I can't decide about if I want or not is the aero. Now... I'm not sure if having the rear wing is actually going to do a huge amount on these vehicles. Cause I'm not sure we're ever really going to be going quick enough to need the downforce or to, for the downforce to be generated. Um, yeah, I don't know whether we want it or not. Uh, let's go for it. I think with the Carlton, I probably will. I mean, the downside, in fact, there's not really a downside, come to think of it, of putting air on it. It slightly lowers, it lowers your top speed 
that's irrelevant. You know, it's, it's no use to me, the uh, the top speed, because you're not going to get above 100 or 120-ish. So, um, yeah, I guess there's no real downside to, to having aero. It does add a little bit of weight, but it deducts PI. So we don't. The, the drag isn't a problem. It's probably worth you know just kind of sticking it on the car. Uh, anyway, brakes, of course, very, very important uh, in this, as is the suspension. We want racing suspension for, for these cars. Front and rear anti-roll bars most definitely will be going on the vehicle. Now, I want race weight reduction, but this is all going to be about can I keep the PI uh, low enough. Yes, I can. I can get the race weight reduction in. We'll get it to halfway through A-class. And we will want the roll cage on pretty much every vehicle, I would think. The uh, the chassis the chassis reinforcement, chassis stiffness will be useful to help with the handling of the vehicle. So we are just tipping the scales at over three thousand pounds, but we've got a little bit of uh, room to play with. Oh, another rule I forgot completely forgot to mention. Sorry, uh, the cars must remain with their standard drive line. The standard, so we can't swap the cars to be rear wheel drive. Uh, sorry, four wheel drive or the you know, the front wheel drive cars have to stay as front wheel drive and so on. Uh, just to keep things a little bit interesting. Um, now, do we go? I want to go exhaust. I want to try and get the weight under three thousand if I can. Uh, quite close there. I'm thinking. I'm thinking we're going to want to go gearbox. Yes, gearbox can save some weight. We're probably going to. We'll stick this diff in anyway. Uh, diff makes a huge difference in the old cars and much older cars that like to spin one wheel up. I'll just stick it in vehicles. It's essentially a free part. It doesn't really change the uh, the PI any. So I will tend to stick it in vehicles. Uh, yeah, well, we've got it under three thousand pounds now. With the essence of the drive line, I'll keep the clutch out just in case we need, you know, that couple of PI to uh, to get the car uh, up to the top of A class. Sticking some pistons, saving a little bit more weight. Uh, when, uh, I think turbo. I think it may be better to go for superchargers than turbochargers. In all honesty, if I have a choice, I will probably go with a supercharger. But of course, the the, the Carlton naturally comes with the uh, the turbos, and I'm pretty sure I can't change it. Uh, no, we can't. What engines can you get in a Carlton? Oh wow, bloody hell! You can get the Enzo engine in the Carlton. That sounds like fun. Uh, <laughs> wait, hold on. Was that? Uh, no, there's, there's S class. Oh, surely that can't keep it in. Wait, never mind. Uh, oh no, sorry, it's not the Enzo. It's V10. My bad. I completely, uh, <laughs> completely brain farted. Then I thought that said V. Never mind. Um, yes. Okay. You can still get a lot of power out of one of them engines. Um, right. We've got a little tiny, tiny bit of PI to work with. Uh, can we get air filter? This should do it. Uh, oh, not quite as much uh, added on there as I expected. Okay, maybe one of... Uh, Alright, there we go. That'll get us up to, uh, to 699. 440 horsepower. Pretty good. Pretty good. The other thing to consider as well is that these cars are going to be less powerful than the rally car builds that we saw. A class on here is much less than an S1 class, so yeah, we're going to be down on on power uh, con compared to the, you know the rally cars. But let's face it, these uh, these are being asked to do a very very different thing. So 440 is or 440 horsepower, 485 torque is a lot for what we're going to be uh, asking the Carlton to do. It's uh, a little, quite a lot heavier than the uh, the mono. Uh, it is down to under three thousand pounds. It may be a, a trifle heavy, and it's it's the size as well that could work against the Carlton. But we're going to see how it goes. We're going to give it a thorough test and uh, see if the Carlton uh, can get anywhere near the time set by the mono. Okay, Carlton is uh, pulling up to the uh, the start line. I'm slightly slightly scared how this one is going to drive. I think we're going to have a lot more oversteer to uh, to be worrying about. Okay, I didn't expect that to have uh, st stalling issues. Okay, let's just take it nice and easy through that. Oh, we've got quite long gear ratios. In fact, we've got very long gear ratios, but that's not actually a bad thing for. Uh, <laughs> for this, as uh, it will mean that uh, it's not going to spin its wheels madly. Uh, very, very bizarre having that long a gear ratio when putting in a race box, but there we go. Um, yeah, we're not going to have manic, manic oversteer problems, so that is actually quite useful. Even if off the start line it won't help particularly, we will be a little bit sluggish, sorry, getting away. The fact that we have got much more control through these twiddly bits is very, very useful. Okay, thank you, Carlton. That is a uh, ooh, a good start to uh, <laughs> to this in the handling department. It's changing direction pretty damn well for a big saloon. Oh, I try. I pushed it. Why was I pushing it through there? <laughs> I thought, yeah, it's going really well. I'll take that flat. No, that was a silly thing. Silly, silly idea. Why on earth would I do that? 
<laughs> okay, we slightly missed that uh, missed that corner. Right, first gear is going to be the gear for uh, for the tight sections because they're so long gears. Uh, if we want to get anything from the turbos, first gear is where we are going to uh, to have to keep it pretty much. A uh, couple of sections, of course, we will be going up to second, but it seems like they're the only gear. <laughs> <laughs> That's really, really peculiar from the from the loads. I mean, it doesn't really affect very much in in the grand scheme of things for, for what I'm asking the car to do. It's just weird that it would have that. Uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to need third gear here. Uh, we may keep it in second though. Keep it nice and settled around that part. Even then, it wanted to go burst into wheel spin a little bit. Hmm. Okay, so we're going to have to be a little bit careful around there. All right, get that back down to first. Oh, the bloody da! That stupid gas. <laughs> <laughs> really don't like that gate. <laughs> it's really annoying through that bit. Whoa, okay, I've got a little bit ragged now. A little bit ragged. Uh, try to get some more speed out of it. Yeah, it's... Uh, it, I, I, I like the way it's driving. I mean, you can tell it's quite a lot heavier. Yeah, we've not, we've not got the turning for that. Okay, so we've got to be careful of the understeer through some of the sections. Uh, we've got to try and make the most of the uh, fast sections that we can, although it's not going to handle like the mono, so don't take the corners like, the, <laughs> like you would with the BAC. We've got to be careful through the, uh, the faster sections because we simply can't carry the speed. There'll have to be more of a brake, more of a lift through the uh, through a couple of the sections. But for a uh, for a for a first first benchmark test, if you like, clipped a couple of gates. If we can not make the same silly mistakes, it's it's going to set a respectable time at least for the uh, for the Lotus. Yeah, the trick is to uh, I've been spoilt by the. Uh, by the BAC, just a little bit on uh, on that first run. We've got to uh, turn back the aggression with this car a little earlier on the brakes, and you know, don't try and carry as much speed. We haven't got simply got the turning. We'll have too much understeer uh, from the vehicle if we try and carry the speed. And we got a much better launch that time around. Right through the first the first section, if you like. Oh, and really, make sure we slow it down for that type bugger of a, of a hairpin. Get over the side. I think it's probably better to perhaps slow it down early and then worry about getting out of the corner rather than running too deep into the first part. So we will have to have a breakthrough here. Yeah, we won't do it much quicker than that. Back end actually wanted to have a little uh, a little slide. Uh, we did get it. I did put it into third gear uh, <laughs> down there. I'm not sure it was really necessary, to be honest. Uh, right, now this is where we've got to be careful now. Remember, don't, don't try and drive it flat out. It won't do it. Also, remember the width. Remember the width of the car. This thing is much, much wider than the mono. So give the uh, the left-hand side a little bit more leeway than I was. So we don't have any silly more mistakes. I mean, we can still take a lot of speed through here. That was just a small dab on the brakes. So again, this is what I'm talking about. You know, we suddenly get up to 108 miles an hour down there. And then we're back to doing 30 and 40. The difficulties of this course, the way it chops and changes pace, is uh, makes for a lovely, lovely challenge. I really do quite like it. Oh, we carried too much speed into there. I think I clipped one. I think I buggered it up. <laughs> we got one. I think we definitely clipped the first one. I just ran too deep into the corner, trying to get that power down, trying to get that speed out of the car, and it didn't quite work. Oh, I've overdone that one there completely. I have rescued it. We got through the gate. <laughs> we got through the gate, but uh, completely ran far, far too deep on the way into the corner. So we've got to not make that same mistake again, basically. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Right, oh, there goes the back end. And, yeah, okay, so higher speed corners, we have a little bit... Uh, it's so narrow through there when you're in a car like this. Higher speed corners, we have got to be aware that the back end may want to uh, to step out. It may want to have a play around. Oh, that was out towards another gate. Please, Lotus, behave yourself. Please be a nice car and stop, stop the sliding around. Uh, <laughs> Oh, it does feel it feels so heavy through that. That's just this sort of final section where we start getting into a little bit more technical. It feels so heavy compared to the mono. Again, not surprising. It's just the yeah, <laughs> that's that is how it uh, how it feels. And I am quite glad I have silly long gears because otherwise I think the oversteer would be a real issue with this car. We clipped a couple of gates. We definitely lost about ten seconds uh, in in that one there. So I mean, we take that time off. It's. It's not that far off. I think if I can get a nice clean run on uh, on this final attempt, it's really not that far off. Okay, final attempt for the Carlton. Will we be able to get a clean run? I'm hoping we will. Will it be as fast as the mono? I think we will be struggling, but you never know. <laughs> maybe, maybe I can do something miraculous uh, with this car. I was really jumping on the power soon through there. Right, slow down for this bit there. Again, we're trying to get on that power as soon as possible. Make the most 
of all of the power that we do get in the uh, in the Carlton. It'll dab on the brakes. It does change direction very well through that fast bit there. Really good through that uh, that fast section. Uh, it's nice and planted. It's just through these bits here, as you would expect from a big saloon car. It's just, you know, you've got to just wait and wait and wait and be nice and slow through them to make sure you fit through the gates. I, one thing that we probably will see, and one thing that uh, I'm going to be doing definitely on this run, is braking early. Braking early for some of these sections is really going to be very, very important. So it's much better to make sure you've got the car settled uh, and get it through the gate. Like, brake way back here, and then we can s set it up for the gate neatly uh, and keep a smooth line through it. If you start trying to brake as late as absolutely possible, sure, you might make the gate, but uh, the second you throw yourself out of position, you know, you'll throw yourself out of position for the whole run down here, and uh, that could be really, really costly. Uh, it lose you loads and loads of time just from going in a little too deep. So, uh, yeah, definitely braking, braking early with the, uh, the vehicles, making sure you can get that smooth line through the corners is going to be very, very important. Uh, don't like it stepping out on me there. That was uh, <laughs> not a good place to have the vehicle stepping out on you whatsoever. This is an even worse a place. I'm keeping it in seconds so that it doesn't. And uh, whoa, that, oh, that, is, that feels so narrow in this car. It feels ridiculous fitting it through there at, uh, at speed. Yeah, that's definitely the way to do it because you just can't afford to have the car bursting into wheel spin. Uh, sure, I mean, I, I can catch the car, I can stop, stop it from losing control, but when you've just got a, a millimetres to spare either side of you, you know, <laughs> you get a wiggle on, that is, uh, that is game over. Uh, this run's actually not looking too bad for time. Uh, as I said, I'm ignoring the, uh, the dirty runs if it's running wide from that, uh, that first section. Uh, this, though, is not looking too shabby whatsoever for the Carlton. It is 215.4. It is eight seconds off the BAC Mono, but that's for a four-door super saloon car. I'm pretty impressed, actually. That is not a bad time whatsoever from the, uh, <laughs> from the Carlton. So... There we go. The, uh, yes, I did like the livery, thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that is, uh, that is our, our target. The, uh, the mono sits at the top of the table with a 2 minutes 7.7. .7. The Carlton is a fair way back, however, pretty respectable time for the, uh, for the vehicle nevertheless. Anyway, that is it for this, uh, video, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.